The Deadly Cycle, Understanding Temptation's Power by Paul Bucknell, produced by Biblical Foundations for Freedom. I'd like to talk about the godly cycle. It's kind of hard to explain how sin works. It, sin creeps in unaware. But let me try to explain how it works in the believer's life, the Christian's life. Each and every genuine Christian has a new heart. Uh, this He's been born again. He's born of love, as it says in 1 John. That love of God just drives his heart now, and there's that interest and desire to do good and lovely things. The old heart, that has been put aside, as the scripture says, is dead. By dead, it talks about that it no longer enslaves us, controls us, dictates our life, as it does an unbeliever. But the new heart is what spontaneously drives us and encourages us to do the good thing. Now, how this works is the new heart sponsors a whole set of desires to care for people. I remember when I became a Christian, I just wanted to read God's word. I wanted to help people. It's just something that comes out of our new heart. That desire, in the end, will produce certain actions to care and to love others. And so we see here a, a linear type of pattern of the new heart producing those things that are good and lovely. But we won't fully understand this godly cycle until we understand the thoughts that are put around it. It's like a subroutine, a special cycle of itself where the desires and thoughts merge together and produce that action. What happens is I, I might sense that I want to do something, but it has to go through my mind, my thoughts, where God's truth encourages me in the end to be brave or to trust him or whatever, to, to do that action in faith that God will help me to love that neighbor, to forgive that person. Well, we find here that whole new cycle, godly cycle, is separate from the old heart. And the new heart will just produce those things that are good and lovely. And in and of itself, it just is wonderful. We ask this question, why is it that the Christians still sin? Well, I'd like to go on and explain better how this works. Well, we have the whole godly cycle here before us. The new heart will only produce that's what is good and holy, and that's what talks about in Galatians 5 and in Romans 6 and 7 and 8. But the old heart is separated. Uh, it's put aside. It, it's dead. But the old heart, if you understand it, will only produce that which is evil, only that which is unholy and unloving. It's what drives our old nature. That is our old nature. But the new heart and the old heart are diametrically opposed to each other. But let me go on here. How is it that the old heart that is said to be dead, still somehow it seems to rule us at times? How is it that believer actually will sin? Now, if we're here in the godly cycle up above, well, how is it that we actually would go and live from our old heart? The new heart's not going to do that. Well, it so happens that Satan has an access to our thoughts. He cannot touch our new heart. He cannot even touch those desires, those godly desires that come out of there. His entrance is into our thoughts. Uh, the evil one has done that with Jesus in the temptation we see in Matthew 4. He has done that with Adam and Eve before they sinned in their righteous state. Satan still could have access to them. And in the same way as believers, even though we have this godly cycle and we operate within it, Satan has a way of entering that cycle and bringing evil thoughts to our minds. Now, as we know from study of the temptation of Jesus or Adam and Eve, those thoughts don't necessarily appear to be evil or unholy, but they are. They're often half lies. They twist the truth in such a way that the falsehood that the evil one is sponsoring in our mind looks attractive. So this is the temptations. Uh, this is the way the evil one inserts actual thoughts in our minds. Those thoughts are temptations to induce us to sin. Now, I want to just summarize. Now, the new heart will only produce that which is good. The old heart will produce which is evil. Now, Satan enters our, our thoughts, that godly cycle, to disturb it by these temptations, these thoughts. But I want now to show you how the evil one actually hijacks our thoughts and brings us into sin. Now, it's our sin, but he gives us these thoughts and feeds them into our mind. We have a new heart and those desires and thoughts and actions are all there as part of a cycle that is to be repeated. And that's how we grow by just maturing. Now, Satan will tempt us. That is, he will bring a certain half-truth into our minds to have us doubt God and to trust our own judgment. That goes contrary to what God wants. Now, notice that what happens is once we trust that temptation. Once we listen to the evil one, 
those desires all of a sudden begin to degenerate from the lie. And those desires will be bad desires, not the ones that are generated from the new heart. No, no, not at all. In fact, those desires that are sponsored from that evil thought are connected to our old heart. And so what happens is that we have a whole new cycle that is regenerated again and again, separate from that whole godly cycle. And so the thoughts that we've had, the bad thoughts, the temptations, sponsor evil desires that connect us to our old heart. And the old heart seems to dominate us and control us. And this is where the believer often feels like he cannot but sin. He's trapped. And sometimes even the evil one will bring the temptation into our mind to think that we're not even believers. Well, what happens is this cycle is actually just all a false cycle. It's not true. What's true is that we really have a new heart and we are dead to this old heart. Now, as long as we listen to the evil one and obey him, we will generate those false actions. So at any point in our lives, we are able to turn out of this by just repenting, confessing what is true, that I'm not thinking and doing what God pleases God, and start pleasing God. He wants me to love. Okay, I'll love. I'll forgive. I'll be kind. Well, this is the sin site, and this is what ensnares believers. And it's only temporary, and fortunately, through Christ's blood, we have total forgiveness of this, and we can just easily step back into the whole new cycle. I'm introducing the discipleship to Reaching Beyond Mediocrity series. This deadly cycle is not often understood, and so many are caught unaware in sin. And I invite you to join this Discipleship to Reaching Beyond Mediocrity series to better understand not only how one is tempted, but on how to overcome sin. And that's God's plan for you. It's not what we discussed here. We hinted at it. But I'd like to show you how each one of us can be an overcomer like God calls us to be, a strong believer in Christ. Oh, Lord, you are so wonderful in saving us by the blood of Christ. Lord, many of time we have fallen from you. We have succumbed to the temptation of the evil one. We haven't even discerned the thoughts in our minds. Oh Lord, we have compromised the commands that you have given us to live by. We ask that you might forgive us through the blood of Christ, that you might help us, Lord, better understand how to be strong, how to live beyond these temptations, and like Christ, Lord, to walk in his footsteps. Oh, keep us, oh Lord. Teach us that we might all the more be those righteous men and women of God that you can depend on. Bless us and keep us, we ask in Christ's name. Amen. The Biblical Foundations for Freedom, www.foundationsforfreedom.net.